Welcome back to BRB TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and today we're looking at the brand new Sony ZV-1F. Now, this is Sony's most basic, simple, and affordable vlog camera to date, but simple can also mean stripped down. This is definitely aimed at a more entry-level audience. So today's review is really gonna help you decide whether this is too basic for you or exactly what you're looking for. Now, because this is a vlog camera, and a pretty basic one at that, when we do our vlogging features, I'm gonna be using it the way that basically Sony intends it to be. Automatic mode for a lot of situations, automatic exposure, we'll see how it handles these very backlit situations, automatic autofocus, but this camera does also have some manual features. We'll talk about that, and where applicable, we'll tell you how you can be more creative with it. Okay, so first I wanna let you know, we're not gonna vlog the entire episode, okay? Jordan's shooting on the Sony FX30. I'm sure it looks glorious for the talking points. And let's get on to our first talking point, which is what is at the heart of the Sony ZV-1F? Well, first off, the lens. Now, this is interesting. We actually have a Zeiss Tessar lens here, 20 millimeter full frame field of view equivalent, F2.0. Now, this lens is fixed. You don't have any sort of zoom. There's a digital zoom, but that's just a crop. Yucky, but it does give us a nice wide angle field of view, which is interesting not only for photos, photographs, but to give you that extra room for when you are vlogging, as well as for when you need to crop for things like active steady shot. Let's talk about that next. Indeed, this setup does not have any sort of image stabilization in the lens. There's no image stabilization on this sensor at all. So active steady shot is it. And that is a digital stabilization system where the, you know, the video is going to crop in. It only works for video, not for photography. Now, the ZV-1F's bigger, more expensive counterpart, the ZV-1, does have built-in ND filters and options. It's got a three-stop ND filter built in, which is great. This, of course, does not because it is more simple. However, there is a 40.5 millimeter filter thread in the front of this lens, which is nice. I mean, if you want to do things like polarizers, creative filters for photography, but also ND filters for video, you do have that option. I don't know necessarily if the target audience is going to be inclined to do that, but it is nice to have that as a creative option. Now, what about the sensor? Well, we do have a Type 1 sensor here, 20 megapixels. It is not a stacked sensor in any way. And the autofocus here, interestingly enough, is not phased detect contrast detect hybrid it is contrast detect only now to be fair it is still actually quite snappy quite accurate contrast detect usually is and it does have some nice features like human face detect autofocus and so far that seems to be working quite well useful not only for when i'm taking pictures but also vlogging and making sure that the autofocus stays locked on my eyes okay so this lens and sensor combination in full frame terms is going to give me the depth of field equivalent of roughly a 20 millimeter full frame lens set at f 5.6 which actually would give me a fairly substantial amount of depth of field. Now for photography, this limits your creative options. I can get a somewhat soft background if I'm fairly close to subjects, but really with that wide angle, it's always gonna be those sort of wide shots with a lot in focus, and that does limit you creatively. I think for video, this makes more sense. In a vlogging situation, holding the camera here, I can get a somewhat soft background if I want my subject to stand out more, but also that extra depth of field is gonna cover any sort of autofocus inconsistencies. It just makes sense that way for video more than for stills. Now the ZV-1F is certainly a very lightweight, very compact, kind of plastic camera, but I have to admit, I actually like the way it looks. It's got a handsome lens design here. The grip on the side, although very simplistic, is actually quite functional. I don't feel like I'm gonna lose purchase on the camera. So of course the goal of this camera is to be as simple as possible, and so, I like that in some ways. Of course, I dislike it in others. It certainly does achieve its goal of being very easy and very unintimidating for a new user. But you do have very simplistic controls. So we've got that same defocus button that just basically tells the camera to go really tight aperture, really wide aperture to kind of control depth of field without you knowing anything about aperture. We saw that in cameras like the ZV-1. Uh, we do have a nice easy to see and press record button. And we do have a mode button here. And this is something very important on this camera. You can use it all the time. Every time you press it, it's switches between slow motion video, regular video, and then your photography mode. So you'll use that a lot. Uh, the on off button, which is actually obscured quite a bit for, uh, with this windscreen on here, but you can still get to impress it. Now, this camera, although designed very much to be an automatic camera, does have full manual capabilities. Unfortunately, though, you only have the one control dial on the back to change those things. So it means a lot of button presses to cycle back and forth between aperture and shutter and ISO, and then using the wheel to change it and very Invariably, you're going to push it too hard in a direction, take you into another mode or something like that. But otherwise, it does achieve its goal of being easy to use. So yes, this camera is stripping down a lot of features and simplifying things really aimed at the beginner user. But 
One place where beginners can really get tied up is in a complicated menu system, especially with Sony's traditional menus. And so one of the best upgrades here is that the Sony ZV-1F actually uses their most modern menu system, which is a vast improvement. Of course, you also have Sony's excellent function menus where you get your quick menus with the tiles below. And I love that you can customize those as usual, but you also get separate function menus for both photo and video modes. And as you go between them, it switches automatically. And that's really nice because then you only have the relevant quick features that you want to adjust. I think that's really smart. So overall, this camera has excellent ergonomics, easy to use menu and controls for the beginner user. For an advanced user wanting to get a little bit more out of this camera, well then the controls become kind of clunky and the interface can be slow to use. Oh, well that's, that's amazing. I've never seen this before. Jordan, when the camera can't confirm autofocus, the box doesn't go red like normal, it actually goes purple. It's adorable. This is my new favorite Sony camera when it can't focus. Anyways, uh, the camera focuses pretty close. I mean, we've got a small sensor, we got wide lens, so close up capability, you can get the camera right in there. And if it can't get the focus, you get a charming purple box. It's amazing. Now the Sony ZV-1F doesn't have an EVF, doesn't have an option for an external EVF, but you can go through the micro HDMI port to an external monitor. Uh, I do also like though that we have a three inch fully articulating LCD panel. Of course we expected this, but it gives you a nice advantage over smartphones. I mean, you'd be able to do your own vlogging of course, but also be able to get different angles. I mean, right now I can see the panel, but it's below my face and it can still have that panel facing up towards me as well. Just, you know, on a side note, this camera does have a tally lamp on the front. I like that they've included that. It's nice and clear. And I think even shooting off this uh, spherical mirror, I think the face detect is still working. Now the ZV-1F does have a fairly sophisticated audio setup, three built-in microphones. You're listening to me on them right now and you're probably hearing, you know, construction and stuff in the background, but it does a good job of picking up your ambient noise. There is also a windscreen or dead mouse that goes onto the cold shoe that covers over so you don't get any of those noises. And we've always found that very effective on the ZV-1. Now that cold shoe means that there's no electrical connection. So you're not using Sony microphones that plug directly through the shoe into the camera, but you can use any number of of shotgun microphones and then it plugs right into the 3.5 millimeter mic jack on the side of the camera so you do have that option now unfortunately just like we complained about on the ZV-1, the ZV-1F is missing a headphone jack. And we just really feel like, you know, although it's a minor thing to put on there, it's very important so a vlogger can make sure that they aren't picking up too much, uh, you know, ambient audio or that they're not getting clothing noise from their microphone or wind noise that they don't want in the video. So I still feel like that's a real uh, oversight. They should have that on there. Now, although this is Sony's least expensive vlogging camera, I'm really happy to see the return of one of our favorite features, and that's the product showcase feature. And if you're a vlogger or an influencer and you're showing products, it's great. So for example, look at these icebreaker mints. I put them in the middle of the frame and the camera automatically focuses on them. And then if I want to give you a review on these sugar-free uh, mints with flavor crystals, it's easy to then go from the product back to my face. And then I can show you again that this has a wonderful wintergreen flavor, but they are unfortunately artificial. Also the packaging, if you sit on it, it's easily crushed. Now, I do love this feature. It's very simple to use. You just push one button and engage it. I will say with the contrast detect autofocus, it's fairly smooth, but I'm noticing, and you probably are too, that sometimes the focus jitters just a little bit, and it's a little bit slower to go from the product to me than what you might find on one of the more advanced hybrid autofocusing vlog cameras. Let's talk about the photo capabilities of this camera because this is gonna be a big deciding factor in whether this is right for you or not. Now, first off, we've got a Type 1 sensor, 20 megapixels. Not the greatest low light performance, but it's actually got really good detail with this lens. However, the big glaring omission here, this camera doesn't shoot raw, and that's gonna be a huge thing. I mean, it's missing a big feature that most smartphones still incorporate, okay? A lot of point and shoots had it as well. Having the ability to shoot raw means that you can push and pull your photos and really bring up shadows, bring down highlights, change white balance in a big way. And you know, you're either gonna really dislike that this is missing, for example, in my case, or you're gonna be indifferent because you just don't shoot raw anyways, in which case I think that's really the target audience. So it's pretty clear that the ZV-1F is intended to be used as a vlogging video-based camera, not for photography. And so 
in the regard we actually have, considering its price point, a fairly well featured video suite here. So first off resolutions, this camera will support 4K 24 and 4K 30, but we do not have a stack chip here. It will not go beyond that. If you then go into faster frame rates, you've got 1080 all the way through to 120 frames per second. And so you can do some fun slow-mo stuff like that. Now today we've been shooting the vlogging portions just using the standard creative effect, but you do have actually a pretty healthy suite of picture profiles here from Sony, including Cine Gamma modes and S-Log2. Now, this is interesting seeing as how they left RAW off the camera, but they do give you S-Log, which is arguably even harder to process than RAW, especially because we're talking about a Type 1 sensor, S-Log2, 8-bit files. Uh, you know, Jordan's been grading some of this, and it takes him way back to the early days of where your exposure actually has to be pretty bang on. You got to really know what you're doing in order to utilize S-Log2 8-bit properly, and you're still going to get noisy shadows off of this smaller sensor. But regardless, it's there, and if you feel like challenging yourself and trying to get the most dynamic range, at least it is in the camera. They didn't omit that. One thing I am going to say though about the video quality, although pretty decent, having that nice wide angle, which is excellent for vlogging and gives you plenty of room so that the active steady shot can crop and still be usable. One feature that we don't like here is, well, the rolling shutter on this sensor. It doesn't read out very quickly and you can see if you're doing any sort of panning, you're going to see a real pronounced jello effect. I think if I was doing a vlog talk and I was walking, I'd especially want to make sure that I'm not moving the camera left or right too much. You know, I got a pretty steady gait and I don't have strong verticals the background because they could get quite distracting. So who is this camera for? Well, first off, photographers, I think you're gonna wanna skip this. I mean, it's a snapshot camera. It's basically like an old point and shoot in your hands as far as that goes. And we gotta compare it to smartphones. Your smartphone with its computational technology will take better photos in most situations than this camera, certainly better low light shots. It'll probably have more focal lengths available and it very likely shoots raw. So I just don't think that this is a consideration if you're into photography beyond any sort of casual point and shoot way of using this camera. Now, should you buy this to do vlogging and video instead of your smartphone? I mean, that's a valid question, and there are some advantages here. First off, of course, having that fully articulating screen is great to do stuff. With a smartphone, you're either shooting blind using your main camera, or you're using your selfie camera, which is usually worse image quality than your main camera. So this does certainly beat the video quality of smartphones right now, but smartphones are always getting better. I do also like the audio capabilities here. We have good built-in microphones. We've got the cold shoe. It's very simple to mount a shotgun microphone, plug it in, have it facing your subject. Smartphones, you have that option as well, but you usually have to use some sort of rig to build it up so you can attach the microphones and have them pointing in the right direction. It's a little bit more convoluted. Lastly, I think if you are a Sony user already and you want cheap cameras you can use for secondary angles or as backup cameras that will still match color, these are then also a really good affordable choice. And I think if you are just looking for a very simple, straightforward solution for vlogging, you don't want to mess around with any manual controls, you just want to basically point it and shoot it, this does have nice features like the product showcase. And pretty decent auto focusing with that face detect. So I think there are some benefits here for vlogging. All right, as usual, we got a sample gallery, JPEG only, but you can find the link in the description below at deepreview.com. Otherwise, we appreciate you joining us. Please like, subscribe to the channel, let us know what you think below. But otherwise, it's bye from me, bye from Jordan back bye. there, and we'll see you all soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.